India, it is first in quite a few things. It is the biggest and largest democratic nation in the world. In population, India is second only to China. India is the country with the largest active military troops. Among countries having more than one official languages, India has the second position. We have 22 official languages. In sports, our ranking is number one in men's cricket test. And we are the first in the world in the matter of film production. There is another first for India. India has the highest number of native born persons living in a foreign country. We call such people migrants. Uri Rajitha Janicha, Vere Uri Rajitha Poi Jivikina Al Karil, Logatilitu and Koda Rulada, Indian Sana, migrant population and the number of Reparino. This brings to us the study of a term. Diaspora. We are familiar with the term in Malayalam, Pravasikal. It is related to diaspora. Diaspora indicates a scattered population. So, it is a scattered population whose origin lies in a different geographical area. We have lots of Indians, especially Malayalis, living in the Middle East the USA or in other foreign countries. They form a community there, try to maintain their traditions and at the same time merge with the social life of the new land. Diaspora can happen in many ways. A search for labor, political upheavals, forced migrations or trade. Diasporic conditions can be either good or bad. The first module of our study is titled Diasporic Identities. The diaspora identity is revealed in many ways. Religion, dress, food, festivals, all these are representations of a diasporic identity. India in the Videsha Rajangal, the Tamasik and the Samohangal, Avadad Natala, Avadad observe the Wonderna, Mother Paramaya Ajarangal, Prategamaya Ahara Didigal, Vesha Vidanangal, Either Kachila Samangal, Avadad Pragad Pikimbold. Diasporic identity on our vector mark one ceramic another. The study of diaspora brings to us a feature called diasporic literature. These are writings by authors. who have settled outside their native country and have written on the culture and tradition of their homeland. So the diasporic authors, they are settled outside their own countries, but their writing reflects on their homeland.
there are some features of the of diasporic literature they will that will contain reminiscences a longing for the homeland reflections mention of traditions and practices in the native land responses feelings on socio political situations in the land reactions adjusting to situations of the new land in the present module we have five works to be considered the module is titled diasporic identities the first lesson for us is a poem titled i see kashmir from new delhi at midnight i see kashmir from new delhi at midnight this poem is written by agha shahid ali to understand this poem better we should have an idea of the poet and his life when we consider the poem's title and also the name of the poet we can gather some ideas namak ellavarkum alpa oru guess work nadatham nammal aa poetinte title um poetinte perum onnu sradhikkya chila aashayangal chila dharanagal nammada manasilekku varum poetinte peril ninnu oru pakshe namak anumanikkan sadhikkum he comes from a muslim background he has some connections with kashmir at some point of his life he must have been in delhi so he was in one place at one time kashmir possibly he was in delhi at a later time this brings in the element of diaspora agha sahid ali was born in 1949 1949 is just more than one year after independence adu mathramalla kashmir ne sambandhichu indo pak partition kazhinjittu oru varshathine sheshamulla oru kaalayalavu he was born in delhi but he was brought up in his ancestral home in kashmir they belong to a very wealthy educated family kashmir il jeevitham aa samayathe valare dusahamayirun this is the problem of partition with india and pakistan holding claims to the territories there all these made the field one of uh, fights and tensions what we face now here the people there were facing for quite a long time lockdown the reason is pandemic here but politics there agha sahid ali he was born in delhi in 1949 he was brought up in kashmir late at a later point of his life he came over to delhi he had his uh, college education in delhi and in 1976 the poet moves to the usa where he became a teacher and also earned a reputation as a poet the country without a post office that's one of his poems he brought out a collection with the same title the poem we need to study i see kashmir from new delhi at midnight is taken from or is part of this collection 
the country without a post office. Agha Sahib Ali is a representative of diaspora. He has his childhood memories of Kashmir. He spent his youthhood partly in Delhi and then he moved over to the United States of America where he became a teacher and a poet. In most of his poems, Kashmir and his problems form the theme. A brigadier says, the boys of Kashmir break so quickly we make their bodies sing on the rack till no song is left to sing. The poem, I see Kashmir from New Delhi at midnight, comes to us through a narrator. We call it the first person narrator because the narrator uses the word I to speak about himself. This is a poetic feature. If you have a term, you can use the word I in the term, you can use the word I in the term. It needn't be. It can be just one character in the story that is being described. Robert Frost in the process of my poem, Stopping by Woods. Whose woods these are, I think I know. I think I know. I think Robert Frost in the Chindi Karunda. It needn't be. In all, even in the discussion in the poem, we can very well say that the narrator, the I, is the poet himself. So, we can consider this poem to be autobiographical. So, the poet is one character who comes as the narrator in I See Kashmir from New Delhi at Midnight. And in the poem, we have one more character who is named Rizwan. The poem is divided into four sections. It speaks about the miserable treatment the youngsters in Kashmir face from the authorities when they are suspected to be part of terrorist activities. The narrator in the poem, he places himself in New Delhi. It is from New Delhi. New Delhi is the place, as I mentioned, where Sakhid Ali had his college education. It is midnight. The narrator tries to look at Kashmir, but distance and darkness stand in the way. Yet, the poem is a communication with someone he knew in Kashmir, a young man named Rizwan. Let us prepare ourselves to understand the poet's thoughts, feelings and emotions as Aga Shahid Ali takes us along with him when he says, I see Kashmir from New Delhi at midnight. Thank you.